Hey there, fellow aviators. It's Michael with Nocturnal Simulations. If you happen to snooze on last Sunday's epic group flight, trust me, you missed out on some mind-blowingly awesome scenery. Seriously, it was so jaw-dropping, aliens probably thought we had invaded their turf. It also spurred some discussion within the group about the proper way to use the ILS and RNAV systems in the JP Logistics C-152 after we got stuck above a rather thick, low-level cloud layer. So today, we're going to work through just how to do it. All right, guys. So we're at Key West, Florida right now, like I mentioned before. And what I've done is loaded in the procedure for the RNIV 9 approach with the sting transition. And the way you do that is go to your procedures, go to your approach, select 9, and then you can do a load approach, which it's great at now since we've already got loaded. Um, what we'll do is we'll cut off the top portion here and go direct to Chets just to keep this down uh, to a minimum flight time. Currently flying two, three thousand feet and I'll show you a neat feature that the OBS has with the Garmin 750. So go to flight plan, Chets, direct activate and go into nav mode. So like I said we're currently flying up to three thousand feet and I guess it doesn't show it at the moment, but once we are on the approach, these needles will give you a vertical and horizontal guidance, and not just uh, LNAV. So you get LNAV and VNAV on the CD or the OBS same time. Uh, what you want to make sure too is that your approach is in the 750 and it's in GPS mode for your CDI. That way, it's following the flight path you see on your screen here, and if it were in VLOC it will be following a, a, a VOR or ILS frequency that you have dialed into the radio either over here or here. Depending on what, for the top one. Right, I guess the ones up here will correspond to the OBS over here and the radios for the uh, like these appendix comm radios will be for the bottom. So you can actually have a RNAV and an ILS approach going at the same time, and we'll show that here in a little bit. So as you can see now, we're moving to the next waypoint, which is at 1,500 feet. We are left, or uh, yeah, left of the uh, flight path we need to follow. So we need to keep going right, and we need to go ahead and start descending. So I'm going to pull power to help this out a little bit because we're in a climb and gain a little bit too much speed. Go ahead and change the dial to 1500 feet to meet our next restriction. Get altitude, get in the vertical speed mode, and start descending. We'll descend at a pretty rapid rate here, and with the PMS 50, you actually get your VNAV arc to sh help show you where you are going to end up at the elevation you select. So this arc right here. So if I were to decrease the rate of descent you can see it go out so you can kind of fine-tune it and maximize your fuel economy by matching this arc to your waypoint so now we're on the GPS track like I mentioned so your OBS is going to the vertical bar is going to show standard and it's actually taking in the 1500 feet restriction which is being down at the bottom is saying that we're high So we'll continue descending to 1,500 feet, and when we get closer, we'll see that vertical bar actually come up and get centered. This approach mode, uh, since it's got multiple legs and it's not just a straight ILS, uh, we will hit the approach button earlier on around the vertical descent profile with glide slope, uh, just the waypoint right before it. Or at, just slightly before the waypoint that the glide slope begins and that's typically where you want to do it and you want, if you're approaching it from an angle you want to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 degrees off of the LNAV so that way it will capture the localizer appropriately and now since we're getting close to 1500 feet and coming up on that waypoint you can actually see the uh, horizontal bar come up for the center line on the GPS. And we're going to actually fly this approach pretty much in this view right here just to show you how good this is. 
So, since we're starting to level off with the vertical speed, I'm going to bring in some more power. Keep your speed up. Still not quite at 1500 feet as it's descending slowly at the moment. This will get to the uh, horizontal bar momentarily. One thing you want to look at too is go to your charts. And we're back out, go to charts. And we want to look at our RNAV GPS approach for runway 9. And that vertical profile I was mentioning before is that Busby. So somewhere around here, we're going to want to put the autopilot into approach mode. And what that'll do is it'll follow this glide slope in automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to do the math of the ground speed divided by 2. So it would be ground speed divided by 2 times, uh, I guess, 10. So if we were at 90 knots and we wanted to go at this glide slope, we would uh, go to about about 245 and then times it by 10 it gives you 450 so you want a feet, uh, feet per minute of negative 450 but with the light slope follower or the hard app approach it will do it automatically of course all right we're coming up on bus speed so we're at 95 knots i'm going to go ahead and arm the approach mode and you'll see that the glide slope comes in as being armed once we get the bus speed we should start descending into nine at the west. You'll see that our OBS down here is not really doing anything simply because I don't have a doubt in to anything on this radio over here. Okay, we're 1.7 nautical miles from Busby, so we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and we'll see how closely the glide slope comes in to the actual waypoint stuff. It should be should begin right at Busby. Alright, there we go. Alright, it looked like the glide slope came in a little high, so and now we're starting to descend. So we're going to pull power. Get this down to our uh, 85 knot restriction on our flaps. And you can see over here our vertical profile is good, and it's also good here. The horizontal profile has been spot on this entire time, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright, 85 knots. In degrees flaps. All right, so we are two miles up, so let's go ahead and pull in 20 degrees flaps and a little bit of power. Just keep our approach speed in check. And when once we are about 200 feet above the ground, we'll look outside the cockpit and see where we're at. All right, let's go ahead and go landing flaps, 30 degrees. Hit that 60 the knot. Approach speed, so increase the power to reach that. Everything's stabilized. 300 feet. 200 feet is going to be our minimums. Let's add a little bit of power there. 200 feet, and let's take a look outside the cockpit. And we're lined up perfectly. So, at this point, our pilot's off. And you should be on a visual approach. You should be able to see the runway. This is this plane does not have any sort of auto land features, so you can't really rely on the RNAV approach for auto land. It will land. It's just exceptionally rough. So with that, guys, that is how you do an RNAV approach. And next up, after we land, we'll find another airport and we'll do an ILS and RNAV combo. Okay guys, what we'll actually do first is we will go straight into an ILS only approach with the Garmin 750. What I've done is loaded us up into Panama and uh, we're going to do the ILS for Rome number 4. So same scenario as before with the flight plan, you load in KPAM, KPAM for the departure and arrival. And then you'll want to load in the approach for one four left for the ILS under the procedures. If we go look at the charts, you can see that the frequency for the ILS localizer is 111.5, which when you load the approach in, it puts it in standby, so you can hit nav. And we are currently in GPS mode. If we were following the actual GPS path we have here, you can see that we're a little bit to the left of it. So what I'm actually going to do is change the CDI to localizer, stay in heading mode, 
we're going to turn into the here just to take a shortcut. You could actually stay in GPS mode all the way up until uh, before you did your glide slope capture. But since we don't want to fly all the way out there for no reason, we're just going to cut it short here. And what we will do is you want to enter the approach at a 30 degree angle or so. So go ahead and arm the approach. It shows armed right here. Our localizer. Get that at a fairly shallow angle. And you can see here that we are seeing the ILS showing that we are low, which makes sense because the waypoint here is 1600 feet and that we are off to the left of it. So we're flying to the right, so we get closer to the vertical. It's coming in now, it should capture the localizer. Just nav mode on. See here that uh, after we went back into nav mode, so that it was following the localizer, it is appearing to do a pretty good job of capturing it. We can move our heading bug around, it's not doing anything. And it's now in approach mode with the glide slope arm. So the vertical bar is coming in nicely, and then the horizontal bar is coming in where the glide slope begins, which is at Eris. Once we get to Eris, we should do the same thing as we did with the RNAV approach and be able to start descending. I'm going to go ahead and start slowing up because we were moving pretty good there. Pull in our 10 degrees of flaps and uh, begin our descent into runway 14 left. Good 10 degrees of flaps. A little bit of power to keep our speed up. Light slope's coming in. And the timing of your flaps and all that stuff can be a little before or after the light slope capture with the C152. And we should see the light slope start moving and the airplane start descending, which it does. So we're going to make sure that we don't overspeed with the flaps, so pull a little throttle. Set rate is about 350. Cruising about. 77 knots or so, ground speed of 83. This is going to bounce around just depending on the weather. But you can see here that we don't have anything dialed in on the OBS 2. OBS 1 is in nav mode. We're going to approach V lock 1, and you are dialed into the 111.5 ILS. But what we'll do is the same thing as last time. Once we get within 200 feet, which is going to be our minimum, we will uh, go to the uh, full view outside the cockpit so that you can see exactly where we're at. And we're coming up on 200 feet. So once we get to 200 feet, we are going to, uh, that's going to be our minimum. So we're going to look at the outside of the airplane, and there we go. Autopilot's going to come off, and it'll control, and just bring it in for a nice, gentle landing. Okay, guys, we are going to do the RNAV and ILS combo. And the benefit of this is that you can have the airplane fly the RNAV in and confirm the accuracy of the RNAV with the ILS. This is good for if you have a failure on one piece of the equipment or the other, you kind of have a secondary check. So what I've got right now is the RNAV 1.4 left dialed in on the Garmin GTN 750. The nav radio is set to some random number. CDI is a GPS. We've got GPS on OBS and we got VLOC on OBS 2. 111.5, which is the ILS frequency dialed in on the radio. And what we're going to want to do now is do a direct to uh, what was the waypoint uh, JESC activate and we can actually start heading in towards that waypoint and once we get closer we'll arm the approach JESC is actually the where the glide slope begins, so we'll be able to confirm the ILS is being followed via the RNAV. Let's go ahead and go into NAV mode. So the approach is armed along with the glide slope, and you 
can see that the GPS says that we need to go to the right just a hair and that we are too low. Uh, that's simply because we're flying at 1600 feet and once we get to the Jesk waypoint we will join the glide slope. And you should see the localizer coming in also here. Remember these aren't going to match initially just because the localizer is looking at this way and the GPS path is saying that we need to go straight this way to go that way. But once they are on the descent, you should see them pretty much match up. And very shortly we should see the airplane start descending. The craft is descending, so it's going to pull some power. And because this is a non-precise approach that we're flying with the GPS, you can see that the ILS doesn't match up exactly with the GPS at all times. So you're going to have some slight differences. So we can go ahead and pull in our 10 degrees of flaps. According to the RNAV, the airplane is actually flying a little low, but the ILS has a stat on. So for your approach, having ILS dead on is perfectly acceptable. Now if you're way off on the ILS and the RNAV was dead on, I'd be a little concerned. And that would warrant a call to the tower to make sure that the ILS is working appropriately. I would typically be okay with an approach up to the first dot. And once you get beyond that and you don't have time to recover, then you probably won't do a go around. So we're at 800 feet and descending still. So let's go ahead and pull in 20 degree flaps. 200 feet. Pop back up. And we're looking pretty good. And like I said, just to give you a good example here, being well off of the ILS can still warrant a pretty accurate landing, especially in the C-152. But the RNAV approach is a non-precision approach, so you're not going to have as good results being exactly where you want to be. And the problem is likely depending on where the GPS waypoint is. So we go to autopilot off manual flight, correct for the RNAV's poor precision. Just a landing. All right, that guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped you out. I know this is going to be a little longer than our usual videos, but there was a lot of information packed into a pretty dense time period there. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below or join the Discord. And with that, happy flying. I'll catch you later.